Hello, everyone. Welcome to the annual presence report for the year ending March 31st, 2020. For those of you who don't know me, I am Jeff Reno, and it has been my great honor to serve as your CAMA president for this year. As you are all aware, our 2020 annual conference, scheduled to take place at the Deerhurst Resort from June 1st to 3rd, 2020, was canceled. However, we will be hosting our annual general meeting virtually using a Zoom webinar platform on June 2nd at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Prior to the virtual meeting, I would like to take a moment to share this year's accomplishments with you, the highlights of the annual report, and what is in store leading into 2020 and 2021, or what we think is in store for the future. The full report was also provided to you electronically for you to read at your leisure. As we continue to navigate this unprecedented situation, CAMA re remains committed to supporting you, our members, in any way that we can. Now, more than ever, it is a reminder of how deeply we're all connected and our collective efforts will help weather this storm. We're all in this together. Looking back over the past year, your board has continued to focus on the many goals and objectives of the current strategic plan. And we are excited to launch the CAO Employment Contract Toolkit, the Council Orientation Toolkit, both in the fall of 2020. We are continually reviewing the life cycle of the CAO and are committed to assisting both the next generation of managers and those with deep experience with the development of new tools and programs to address your everyday challenges. I will touch on these projects in more detail today. First, I would like to acknowledge the members of the CAMA Board of Directors. It has been a pleasure working with these dedicated professionals. And since they are not here with me today, I would like to acknowledge them each virtually. Jake Rudolph, first Vice President for the Representative for British Columbia. Jack Benzikan, second Vice President, Representative for Quebec. Corey Belmore, Treasurer, Representative for Yukon, Northwest Territories, and Nunavut. Mark Landry, past President. Don Chaplin, Representative for Newfoundland and Labrador. Beverly Handry, Member at Large. Brenda Orchard, Representative for Ontario. Tony Kubilski, Representative for Alberta. Mike Dolter, Representative for Nova Scotia and PEI. Mark Melanson, Representative for New Brunswick. Also, a special thanks to Rodney Sage, former CAO for the City of Brandon, who retired from the board in January 2020 after serving as the representative for Manitoba and Saskatchewan for the past two years. With respect to the CAMA National Office, we continue to be very grateful to CAO Chris McPherson and the Fredericton City Council for hosting the CAMA National Office at their City Hall since 2005. The board was pleased to present Chris with the honorary life membership in CAMA at the 2019 Quebec City Conference. This is an honor presented to individuals who have made an extraordinary contribution to the field of municipal administration and to the work of CAMA. Thank you, Chris, for the continuous support that you and your staff provide to us every day. Fredericton's Chief Information Officer, Adam Bell, also helped us with our technology needs for this presentation and for our virtual AGM. With respect to our membership, the membership of our association continues to remain solid with CAMA currently having 650 members from across the country, with 60% of our membership being from communities with populations under 20,000. This year marks the last year of our strategic plan. The board completes an annual review each September to stay focused on the trends that continue to shape the local government environment and municipal administration profession. In addition to our core services that we provide our membership on a regular basis, the past four years have been quite ambitious with the launch and promotion of three toolkits, a Making Life Happen campaign for the next generation and the creation of a mentorship forum. As previously noted, we will also be launching two more toolkits later this year. You can find our report card, which outlines a snapshot of all the projects we have completed during the strategic plan on the website. So what's next, 2020, 2021? There is one year remaining in our strategic plan, running April 2020 to March 2021, and we plan to focus on the following. We look forward to, outreach, to outreaching to small, large, and francophone municipalities to convince them to join CAMA and to attend the conference, to increase the outreach to elected officials so that they will see the value when their senior managers would like to join CAMA and or attend the conference. The 2021 annual conference will continue to be the priority for professional development since the 2020 event was canceled. Launch of the CAO Employment and Contract Toolkit and the Council Orientation Toolkit in the fall of 2020. 
We will continue to promote all of our toolkits to CAOs and elected officials across the country. We will, with great pride, be preparing for CAMA's 50th anniversary in 2021. We will continue to work with our provincial territorial association partners, international affiliates, and the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. As we look forward to the next five years, we, would, we will be undertaking the planning process for the new strategic plan for 2021 and beyond that was set to take place in September 2020. That review has been postponed for one year due to COVID-19. This will allow us to determine the needs of our profession after things start to return to normal in our own communities. CAMA is also pleased to be conducting an inventory analysis variation of all our assets with Brent Baroudis, President and CEO of Partnership Group Sponsorship Specialists. This review will be completed prior to the strategic planning process and will assist us in ensuring that we are providing our sponsors and exhibitors with the best programs possible and that our other core services are being the most effective for you, our members. A special thanks to Rose Fernandez, our Manager of Partnerships and Exhibitors, who is leading this project. Professional development and networking remain the most valued aspects of CAMA membership, and some of this may be virtual for the foreseeable future. We will continue to reach out to you for input as we start to shape our next five years as an association. I would like to take this time to reflect upon the 2019 Quebec City Conference. Thank you to Mark Landry, CAMA past president, for his leadership as chair of the program committee and to Luke Monty, CAO, and his team from Quebec City for hosting an extremely successful 2019 conference. This event brought a surplus of $42,000 and 274 delegates and 58 companions attended. Our delegates have told us that this was an excellent networking event and a first class speaker program and a spectacular president's dinner showcasing the wonderful heritage of Quebec City at Le Capital Theatre with the amazing Pinchot family. The informal and knowledge cafes were also very popular, so we will be continuing with this type of learning atmosphere in the future. Even though our 49th annual conference scheduled to take place from June 1st to 3rd, 2020 at the Deerhurst Resort in Huntsville, Ontario was canceled, I'd like to talk about it for a few minutes. We are mindful that the annual conference is a key benefit for CAMA members, and we are saddened to reschedule such a valuable professional development and networking opportunity for our profession. Rescheduling the conference to later in 2020 was unfortunately not an option as Deerhurst Resort was not able to provide us with workable dates and most municipalities will most likely still be in recovery mode from COVID-19. CAMA has financial commitments and contractual obligations to Deerhurst Resort and we are working on future possible dates for holding the conference there. As you are aware, CAMA's preference is to host the conference in the same city or proximity to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. We are waiting to hear from FCM what they will be doing before finalizing any details. We would like to acknowledge the significant efforts, resources, and commitments undertaken by staff and the Conference Planning Committee for the Deerhurst Conference. I had the privilege of, to chair this year's Conference Committee, and I would like to say a special thank you to the members, Brenda Orchard, Tony Kubilski, Mark Melanson, and Mike Dolter. Accolades as well to Denise Corey, the CAO for Town of Huntsville, Michael Dubin, CAO for the Regional District of Muskoka, and Glenn Davies, the CAO for the Town of Gravenhurst, for also being part of our host committee and their commitment to our event. The theme, team, build, team building, making every connection matter, certainly is very appropriate for what our communities are experiencing at this time. Dear Hurst and Huntsville, we will be back in the future to replicate some of the activities and fun events that were planned for this year. Looking ahead, our 2021 conference will be held from May, May 31st to June 2nd at the Fairmont Tremblant with the casual night out taking place at the beautiful Grand Mantou Lodge at the top of the mountain. FCM will be held in Montreal following our event. This is also a very special year for us as CAMA. We will be celebrating our 50th anniversary. Watch for more, more details on this spectacular event and wear your gold to the conference. You will learn about CAMA's history through some interviews with some of our past presidents and honorary members changes in trends in local government, and many other special milestones that we must share with you. The dates and locations for future conferences have not yet been confirmed due to FCM still working on their schedule. We hope to have these finalized by the end of 2020. 
Kemet is always proud of its relationships with our affiliate member partners and other organizations. A special thanks to Tim Anderson, CAO for the City of Waterloo, who is in his last year of his term as ICMA's Canadian International Vice President. ICMA has a membership of 12,000 members and Canada is its largest affiliate with 211 members. If you aren't already an ICMA member, please consider it so that you can take advantage of their many services, including their coaching program and webinars. Kevin members have a special rate for only $135 US to join. Kemet's agreements with New Zealand, Australia, and the United Kingdom focus on three priority areas, annual recognition of the partnership, attendance at annual conferences, and the exchange of best practices. At the 2019 National ICMA Conference, the presidents and executive directors met to discuss topics of mutual interest in our respective countries. I also had the pleasure of attending the LG Professionals Conference held in Darwin, Australia in October 2019 and made a presentation to the delegates on Canvas toolkits. As well, it was my pleasure to attend the Solus Conference in October 2019 in Birmingham, England. For the second year, we were also pleased to invite CAMA members to participate in a Canadian local government manager exchange with the Queensland local government in cooperation with the local government managers of Australia. Nathan Pato, City Manager for the City of Portage La Prairie, traveled to Queensland in September 2019 to participate in the LGMA annual conference and spent a week learning about their local government policies, practices, innovations, and challenges. Australia's representative, Bernard Smith, CEO of Gympie Regional Council, attended the 2019 CAMA conference and has also spent time in Manitoba learning about Canadian local government. For the first time, we partnered with Clare, the Council of Local Authorities for International Relations, on a fellowship exchange program to build networks and promote mutual understanding between the local governments in Japan and overseas. This seminar was held in Tokyo and Kitabaraki City in November 2019. Jeff McKnight, CAO for the town of Bradbury, West Gwilmbury, Ontario, was a successful applicant for this exchange. Over the years, CAMA has had a positive working relationship with the, with the Federation of Canadian Municipalities and has been pleased to assist them with program and policy development on several national issues. I would like to congratulate Brock Carlton, Chief Executive Officer of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, who will be retiring in July 2020. Brock has been an amazing leader for the elected officials and a great friend to CAMA over the years, and we wish him well in his retirement. CAMA will continue to work with FCM in assisting them in all areas of where, where possible. This year, our members provided them with data on cannabis legalization costs across the country, and most recently, some information to help them determine major priorities for communities during the COVID-19 crisis. While in Ottawa in two, November 2019, Kemma was pleased to host a special breakfast meeting with several federal staff members to discuss topics important to Canadian municipalities. You will see what departments were represented on the screen. Jennifer Goodein, executive director, our executive director, continues to chair quarterly conference calls with the executive directors of the provincial territorial associations. A very successful annual meeting was held in Quebec City. This is a great opportunity to get feedback from across Canada on mutual issues. I would also like to remind you of two key partnerships uh, being the MuniServ, uh, don't forget Canvas partnership with MuniServ, which is free for municipalities to use at municerv.ca. This is Canada's leading online solution for helping municipalities search, find, and connect with the right municipal experts and services, saving you and your staff time and money. In addition, Canvas partnership with Box of Docs will benefit you and your staff by providing a discounted rate on monthly and annual memberships for this service. The partnership gives Canada CAMA members access to the next generation of municipal documentation tools from across municipalities across Canada, all in one easy to find place. CAMA launched a membership campaign in September 2019, which focused on our newest benefits being our three toolkits. I am sure you saw some of your colleagues across the country on social media and in our newsletters. The committee continues to work on different marketing tactics to promote our association. Thank you to Prenda Orchard, chair of this committee, and members Corey Belmore, Beverly Hendry, Don Chaplin, and Tony Gubelski for leading the way with these new and innovative strategies. 
One of our goals is to continue to increase the outreach to elected officials so that they will see the value when their senior managers would like to join CAMA or attend our conference. We are very pleased to have a booth at the 2019 conference in Quebec City to promote our organization and our toolkits directly to the elected officials. The attendance of the CAMA booth was excellent and touched on several audiences. We also plan to be in attendance at the 2021 conference in Montreal to add the promotion of our political acumen and council orientation toolkits to our repertoire. As a new marketing tactic, we launched a digital ad campaign in February 2020 to 23 target communities in Ontario area that were close to the Deerhurst Resort. The purpose of this was to target people that work in or near City Hall municipal buildings. Kama has had continued success on social media platforms, and more and more members are using LinkedIn and using it to stay connected with Kama and with colleagues and in municipal news. We thank you for giving back to the profession and promoting Kama to your colleagues and team members. New members can join for 50% off the first year. Now more than ever, it is important to develop a network to help get through everything together. We also have the service that we call Ask Kama. If you have a question that you think your colleagues can assist with, please don't be shy in using Ask Kama tool by sending us an email. Please don't forget about the Making Life Happen toolkit to attract the next generation of leaders to local government. The Making Life Happen program was created in partnership with six provincial associations with a mandate of raising awareness of local government with a specific focus of encouraging younger Canadians to consider a municipal career. The next time you and your staff are asked to speak to local community groups or businesses, explain local government and the role of the CAO, or talk to students about municipal government careers, making life happen will give you the building blocks for a memorable presentation. Tailor a message from your own municipality using the elements and main messages we have created, including a PowerPoint presentation with speaking notes and handouts. We are also pleased to have a bilingual website for this campaign. Visit the Canva website for all the tools. Kema has had great success with the CIO Performance Evaluation Toolkit. Over the past two years, we have marketed this toolkit as widely as possible across the country to the elected officials and the chief administrative officers, and most recently, as noted, at the 2019 FCM conference. We will be continuing to actively promote this document into 2020 to ensure that the newly elected officials after elections are aware of this important process. Since the launch of the toolkit, the feedback has been extremely positive, and we are and we have also tried to make it more user friendly as it does have a lot of gears and options that might at first glance at first glance make it appear to be dauntingly complicated. It's not. It's really a simple tool. To make it easier to see the final product, we have prepared a sample final evaluation report for the elected officials when completing the CAO's performance evaluation, which can be found on the camera website. Please modify it to suit your municipality's requirements. This year, we also touched on performance evaluations for direct reports. Thank you to Fredericton for providing some sample templates and mandate letters. The Word and PDF documents can also be found on the CAMA website. Chair Tony Kubelski led our 2020 Awards of Excellence program this year, and I am pleased to announce that eight successful municipalities will be honored. This year, we received 36 submissions, all of excellent quality. A special thanks to the following jury members for their time and dedication in reviewing all the nominations. Martin Taylor, Sheila bassey kellett John Skorobatz, sorry, John for the pronunciation, John Thomas, and John Enswind. Typically, our awards of excellence are, pre are presented at the annual conference. However, due to the cancellation, the announcement of the winners will be made in September 2020, and a Kevin board member, board representative, We'll attend a city council meeting in the fall to make the presentation to mayor and council, along with showing the video. Watch for the press releases, recognizing your colleagues accomplishments in the coming months. This year, there will be 90 members that will be receiving the recognition pins for long service. Recipients with 20 years of service or more are usually presented with their awards at the luncheon at the conference. However, this year, all recipients will be receiving their pins by Canada Post sometime in the summer months. Congratulations to all for your dedication and commitment to the profession. Under the leadership of the board, the following initiatives were implemented this year. The Political Acumen Toolkit. Recognizing the importance of political understanding in the role of senior municipal administrators, 
also referred to as political acumen. The board was pleased to launch the political acumen toolkit at the 2019 conference. Check out this valuable resource to support you and your senior administrators in their careers. It provides information, downloadable resources, and links to additional materials that will support CAOs and senior managers in building a bridge between the administrative and political realms. Specifically, the toolkit offers advice that clarifies roles and responsibilities with governance, supports relationship building at all levels, encourages situational and self-awareness in municipal leaders, helps manage personal risk, and furthers effective communication and stakeholder engagement. This document is also available in a PDF format. The related mentorship forum was developed in tandem with the toolkit to encourage and facilitate the relationship between experienced and new leaders, as well as support succession planning in local government. It is a resource for connecting with other SCAMA members, finding mentors, obtaining support from colleagues across the country, and discussing municipal issues at a pan-Canada level. Sign up today. The Political Acumen Toolkit Committee was chaired by Bev Hendry and included the following members. Gordon Howie, John Enswind, Sheila bassett Kellett, Diane Burton, Luis Catino, and myself. This committee worked with consultant Transitional, Transitional Solutions, Inc. We hope that this toolkit will become a valuable resource to support senior administrators in their careers and that the mentorship forum will provide a practical way for CAM members to reach out to each other for support. Please don't forget about our CAO Members and Transition Toolkit, which is located in the CAMA Members section. This toolkit can help you as a working CAO to identify the needs at various stages of transition, which will help you navigate your way if you ever find yourself in this most unfortunate position. The committee, led by Tony Kabelski and members Jake Rudolph, Rodney Cumby, and Glenn Davies, worked with our consultant, Susan Shannon, to build the CAO Members in Transition Toolkit which was also successfully launched at the 2019 conference. So what are the next toolkits, you ask? As I alluded to earlier, CAMA was preparing to launch our CAO Employment Contract Toolkit and the, C the Council Orientation Toolkit at the 2020 conference. However, these resources will now be made available in the fall of 2020. Today, I'll give you a preview of what we've been working on. relationships are becoming more and more contentious. Municipal administrators should consider the importance of an employment contract. This toolkit will support the chief administrative officer position or senior administrator positions, which include existing CAOs with past experience in the role or potential future CAOs with no experience as a CAO when negotiating their contract with elected officials. A special thanks to the committee chaired by Jake Rudolph with members Don Chaplin, Mark Landry, Andy Brown, Phyllis Carlisle, and David Stewart who worked with consultant Transitional Solutions Inc. over the past year gathering research, including case studies and best practice for members coast to coast. This resource, along with the CAO Performance Evaluation Toolkit and the Political Acumen Toolkit, will build upon and improve all relationships to create stronger cities and communities. The Council Orientation Toolkit will provide you with recommendations and best practices to provide you and your staff with some resources to ensure that your councils are trained properly after a municipal election. With municipal elections almost mostly occurring every four years, the probability of change is high. Even if all the same individuals are voted in, each term brings a new council. With each, with, with each election, the culture of council may differ, the politics may vary, and, re, and return councillors may become more confident in their role. While the agenda may vary across jurisdictions and municipalities, the overarching purpose and importance of an, of an orientation session is to ensure elected officials understand their role in governance and municipal service delivery. By providing each new council with information they require to get off to a good start and govern successfully, a CAO can build trust from the get-go, establish a strong council-CAO working relationship, and ensure council has confidence in the CAO's ability. This resource will also provide some tips on setting the priorities for your community and a staff orientation on working with council. Kemo was pleased to visit our colleagues in Whitehorse, Yukon Territory for our two, the September 2019 meeting and in Ottawa for November 2019. We held a virtual meeting in March 2020 due to the COVID pandemic and have been continuing to meet bi-weekly. 
As a commitment to finding ongoing efficiencies in the operation of the organization, the board has committed to a one-year pilot to reduce the number of board meetings from four to three. This year, however, will be an unusual year where some of the meetings will be held virtually. I would also like to acknowledge the work of our treasurer, Corey Belmore, for her oversight of Camus finances. Even though we ended in a deficit position for this fiscal year end due to the costs already expended for the canceled conference, Cama continues to be in a healthy financial position. I will leave the financial details to Corey to cover during the virtual AGM. One of the strategic priorities identified by the board is to meet the needs of all member communities. It was approved at the 2019 annual general meeting that CAMA would have two member at large positions. One member at large position dedicated to municipalities over 100,000 and one position dedicated to municipalities under 100,000 population to ensure that the voice of all populations and their needs are identified. Two positions opened up on the board for the 2020-21 year, and an election was held for the Manitoba and Saskatchewan position and the member at large position for a municipality with a population over 100,000. The successful candidates will be announced at the virtual annual general meeting. It has been a busy and productive year for the board, and it has passed all too quickly. I have thoroughly enjoyed my time as president and would like to thank you for this honor. It has been my pleasure to have served on the board for these past seven years. I thank the members of the board for their hard work and for their unwavering support to the association and its strategic objectives. I also thank our staff for their work. While we provide overall direction and guidance, they are the ones who carry out the work of our association's business day in and day out efficiently and effectively. They also provide great guidance to the board. I would also like to acknowledge Mark Landry, past president, who will be retiring from the board. We will miss your wisdom around the table and your friendship. Your continued support to members and involvement in development of our programs and toolkits have contributed immensely to our association and administrative excellence in local government. Lastly, I want to wish the new board and incoming president, Jake Rodoff, all the best as they continue to make our organization even better. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a great association. I wanna thank you for letting me be part of it. Thank you for taking the time to join me today as I know most of you are probably in between emergency measures meetings. We look forward to seeing you at the virtual AGM on June 2nd. Stay healthy, stay strong, thank you.